Okay, so hello, welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, we'll be having a look at the animation rigging package to override animation at runtime. This allows you to still use the Unity animator for your walking or idle animations, for example, whilst overriding it so that your character looks in a certain direction or maybe points at things. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. But first, I'd like to thank Admix for sponsoring this video. Admix is a platform designed to help devs monetize their game without interrupting the player's experience by seamlessly placing ads inside the game world. It takes less than one hour to get set up and with no coding required, just drag and drop the ad placements into your game. It's also fully integrated with Unity and Unreal Engine. There's also an online dashboard with plenty of analytics to help you optimize as you go. Check it out by following the link in the description down below. There's also a link to their Discord server if you'd like to be part of the Admix community. Okay, let's get started. So in Unity, all I have is an empty scene pretty much just with a player object that has an animator and that's it. So the animator is currently playing an idle animation, that's all it has. Just a simple idle animation. This is a character I got off Mixamo. Obviously I've been using this for the last few videos. You guys can use whatever character uh, you want. The whole point is that it has to be a rigged character with some animation already done. Now obviously you have this character's idle animation where all the bones are being animated, but then what if you want to have something dynamic at runtime? What if you want the idle animation to continue, but then perhaps uh, this is an NPC in a game, and when you walk up to them, you want their head to face your head, okay? Now that actual specific scenario would have to be set up in code, and I will be giving somewhat of an example here. But the problem is, you know, if I go into wherever the uh, the head is, and then I try to actually change it, so if I go to the spine, okay, down to the neck, to the head, if I try and actually rotate this, it just doesn't work. The animator ends up overriding all the bones, right? You can't just change that kind of stuff. That's the main problem we have, and that's what the animation rigging package is going to solve. So if we head up to Window and Package Manager, okay, I'm using 2019.3. So if you're using the beta for 2020, there'll be a different version of the animation rigging package and the tool will work slightly differently. You'll still be able to follow along, but there might be, you know, new tools, new faster ways of doing things, but it'll still work and the same way you do things will still be true. So in the Package Manager, go find the animation rigging package, enable preview packages if you haven't already, install that and then come back here. Once you've got the package, head over to your player object. And what we need to do is we need to give the player a rig separate to the rig they already have. So I can make an empty game object and just call it rig on the player, okay? And then what we need to do on the root of the player is add the rig builder component, okay? That goes on the player. And then you can have many, many rigs. So you could have one rig for doing the face aim, one for bringing up the arm and pointing, one for the legs, or one for all of it, you can do whatever. So I'm gonna make this rig just be the, the one rig I'm using for this video. So let's add the actual rig component to it. Now this weight is effectively how active the rig is. So I'll be showing this later as we can turn it on and off. You could just snap it or you can smoothly do this value. So you imagine that if your player's over here, you don't want the character's head to just snap to face your player. You'd like it to rotate through from where it is now to where it should be. So you'd want to move this weight up in code. Uh, rather than just snapping it from zero to one. One nice thing we can do is go back to the player root and add this thing called the bone renderer, okay? By default, nothing happens, okay? This this list is empty. We now need to add all the bones to this transform array, and then it'll actually render them for us and it'll be a lot easier to see what's going on. So I'm gonna actually go lock this window, this window is now locked, and then I can open up uh, this. So if I hold Alt, click the down arrow, okay? And go select all of these bones. So it goes all the way down to here. And if I drag that into that list, we now have all the bones, okay? And you can tweak some things here. So for example, if I just minimize all this, okay? I want the bones to probably be a little bit bigger. So let's put the size up to two, okay? And yeah, that'll do for now. You can change the color if you want. This allows you to see all the bones of your player as well as actually being able to select them individually. So it's very easy now to just select the head bone, for example, like so. So the player, I'm gonna unlock the window now, and we still have this uh, rig layers empty, so let's drag in our rig, okay? And then in the rig, we can now actually start adding whatever we want to do. So if we go to the rig, let's create a new thing called head aim, okay? And this is gonna have something called the multi aim constraint. And what this allows us to do is to, first of all, we wanna put in the object that we're actually going to be uh, changing. So I'm going to change the head of the player, which is going to be this bone here, okay? If I take this bone and rotate it, that's rotating the head. So all I need to do is go back to the head aim and drag that in, okay? So now it's going to control this. Okay, let's change the aim axis to the z axis. This depends on how your model, how your bone structure is set up. So you might have to do some fiddling with this value, okay? But we actually need here to set the source object. 
Now this is actually a list, so you can have multiple. So imagine that your player needs to look at two people as opposed to one. You can actually have both in this list, and it'll try and look in between both of them. And you can actually set the weights individually. So you can say that you want to look closer to one than the other. You know, it really just depends on the weights you set. Um, okay, so then we need to actually set that. So let's create a new sphere, okay, just for us to see in the scene. This is what the player is going to be looking at. And then what we can do on the head aim is we can drag in the sphere, okay, like so. And then in the settings, we want to disable this offset and leave everything else as it is. So now if we hit play, the only other thing we have to do is set the rig's weight back to one because I set it earlier to zero. But you can imagine the player is just looking at me, okay? And then imagine this sphere is, you know, another player. So head height is roughly here. So we want the player now to rotate the head to face this object, okay? Whilst playing the rest of the animation. So we go to our rig and set its weight to one. Notice how the player actually turns to go look at the object. So I've put the object quite far actually behind the player. So let's move it more in front. But you see the point is that it actually works and I can move it up and down. Now obviously, yeah, if you put it behind the player, the head's gonna snap and twist behind. So you can actually set constraints. If we look at the uh, head aim, you can set the limits of rotation and you can also do a lot more about this in code too. But the general premise of it works, the player will rotate, okay? And if you notice, the actual idle animation still keeps playing while this is all going on. So if I stop play, okay, and then go back to the rig, now we kind of want that to be on by default, so let's just leave it on a weight of one. But you imagine then you can actually add more aims. So you can say, uh, aim this bone here so that, you know, it rotates to face the object, whatever, so that when the uh, sphere is moving around, the player can point at something, for example. Ideally, you'd have an actual pointing animation that just points forwards. Then you'd rotate the player to point in this direction, because obviously just by lifting the arm up, the actual fingers and everything aren't doing a pointing animation. So that would be you know slightly more work if you're trying to do it this. I don't know if it'd be entirely possible. But what we can actually do now is I'm going to go to an example I made earlier. So I've got a player rigged set up just like the one I showed you a minute ago. And then we've also got another one over here. This one isn't set up to use the animation. It doesn't really matter. It is using an animator, but it's not using the animation rigging package. And then what we have over here is we've got the head aim, just like I showed you. And then we've also got the upper arm and lower arm aim. And what this allows me to do is to press play, give it a second, press space bar. So now I can actually toggle between pointing and looking at the player and just being idle. Now the actual code I'll show in a second, it's very simple. Um, but what we have now is the ability to move our player around, okay? This guy doesn't care, but imagine I started talking to him. I can then actually enable this. Obviously, you probably wouldn't point at them. And as I said, you'd actually want a pointing animation. But you notice how the head and the arm, the lower arm and upper arm, are all aiming at the player's head now. So no matter where the player is, it'll actually aim. And the idle animation keeps going. So all the, you know, the player isn't just frozen in place. They are still animating doing the idle animation but they're also pointing and looking at the player. And of course, if the player goes behind them, then it goes a bit weird again. Okay, so you have to set your own constraints there. But in terms of just how it works and how it looks, it's pretty good. Now, as for the code I showed you to have the smooth transitioning between being in the idle and being at the pointing and looking, all I have is on the player, uh, on the rig, sorry, I have the uh, pointing example script that I've made. I just have reference to a rig and then the speed at which it transitions, okay? I'm storing the target value, so that'll be either 0 or 1, you know, basically whether we do the animation or not. And whenever I press spacebar, I just set the value to be uh, 1 if it's 0, otherwise 0. Okay, it goes from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. And then every single frame, I set the weight to move towards the target value from the current weight. So this weight is just going to return, you know, 1 or 0 or anywhere in between. The target value is just going to be 1 or 0 based on uh, whether we want to do the animation or stop doing it, and then uh, times by the speed at which we actually want to do the animation, then times delta time, so it's frame rate independent, and that's what gives you the smooth transition whenever I hit the space key to go between the two animations. Now, if it was the head looking at the player when you do dialogue, obviously you trigger that weight through the dialogue system as opposed to, you know, pressing space bar, but the general way it works is still the same. So yeah, that's it for this intro to the animation rigging package and a quick setup and example. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down below, leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next. Thanks always for watching. I'll see you in the next one and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Taylor Rustio, Francisco Lira, John Selig, Liz Kimber, Ansikan, Sam Marcus, Matt Fryer, Ellen, Fabian Reno, Malvin, Samran, David McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Beardodai, Dustin Miller, Rack, Yoris Letter, and Rene. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. 
If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our Udemy course and our website. If you could check any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.